Hi, my name is Rachel Green and I'm a senior software engineer at Homebase in Houston, Texas. I'm really excited to be speaking with all of you. Like many of you, I've had the opportunity to use a variety of programming languages, frameworks, platforms, and methodologies over the course of my career. But no matter what tool I'm using, I always come back to the same thing. Coding is really freaking awesome. There's something thrilling about being able to envision something in your mind and direct a computer to do it and see it do it. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about something as fundamental as printing hello world on the command line or something as complex as getting a list of direct of the top rated Cajun restaurants around Houston and getting directions to the closest one that'll avoid toll roads, construction work, and car accidents. There's just something exhilarating about being able to imagine an app or a script or a program that does something, building it and seeing it actually work. As professionals, a lot of our day-to-day -day work as developers tends to revolve around automating routine tasks, particularly if those things involve math and especially arithmetic. It's not that humans are bad at those things, right? I mean, we're the ones who invented the tasks that we're automating. <laughs> it's just that computers can be a lot faster and more accurate in terms of doing those things. And so we find ways to automate routine tasks to free up time to focus on other things that we want to do or need to do that need more of a human touch per se. But since most of our professional work tends to revolve around designing and developing systems to automate tasks, it can be easy for us to start to view coding and problem solving in general through that lens as a default. You know the saying that if all you have is a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail? Well, we have Ruby and it's all too easy for everything to start to look like a Rails app or a rake task. And this kind of view in terms of coding and problem solving isn't just limited to your day-to-day -day job as a developer. It can start to bleed into the types of side projects that you might come up with or that you might encourage others to continue and contribute in the community for. It can even bleed into thoughts around how to effectively teach other people how to code. If we're not careful, it can be easy to look at software development and even problem solving in general as just a way of organizing everything conceptually into systems and finding the best ways to optimize them to run faster and more efficiently. That's not a bad thing, of course, but like I said before, coding is pretty freaking awesome. We can build almost anything we can imagine, you know, the you know, reality of physics notwithstanding, right? So why not give ourselves space to envision more? Automate that process, sure. But why not envision a new process that works in a fundamentally different way? Why not envision one that eschews the rules and constraints of the old process? Why not envision something that seems to be out of the bounds of systems and processes altogether? What can happen when we give ourselves the space to imagine, well, anything? Giving our imaginations room to room can lead to some mind-blowing ideas, particularly in terms of visual art. There's been a lot of research over the past decades about how mathematics plays a large role in understanding why we find certain images so pleasing and how new ones can trigger that same effect. Coding as a method for automating mathematical calculations is well suited to exploring more about that and even finding new ways to create pleasing images. Take for instance, the JavaScript package FishDraw which uses procedural generation to create detailed drawings of fish. Yes, you heard that correctly, a JS package to generate detailed drawings of fish. 
To provide a bit of context, procedural generation is an area of programming focused on developing algorithms to generate new versions of a thing. You'll often hear it discussed in the context of game development, where procedural generation is used to create everything from background art and music to non-playable characters and even to game levels. You can procedurally generate anything you can conceptualize as code. You just need to create an algorithm to capture the rules and constraints of your generation process. So one day, Ling Dong Huang, the author of Fish Draw, decided to apply procedural generation to fish drawings. And I personally think it's great. Random, of course, but great nonetheless. I mean, you've seen the animation just start over again, right? How could you not be mesmerized watching this be created? And this is just the tip of the iceberg, or um, maybe surface of the pond. There are lots of examples and projects floating around that use procedural generation to generate all kinds of images. Beyond that, the field of generative art or code art has emerged in recent years as coders have come up with all kinds of ways to create art using code, like the Jim Chunky PNG to create pixel art, or this code pen of a synchronized dance routine gone awry. Now, speaking of dance routines, we can use coding to explore and create music in new ways as well. In a second, I'll play a short clip from Ludotune, a music sequencing app called, created by Dylan Turner. In this app, users can assign various tones to cubes and then arrange the cubes in a certain way and connect them in a sequence so that when you press the play button, as I did just there, you can see a visual sequence accompanied by music. We also see other projects like Sonic Pi, an open source Ruby project that is one of, if not the most popular library for creating music using code. We even see Sonic Pi used in a new type of performance art called Algoraves, where a programmer will actually program a synthesizer in real time as the composition plays. Given the ties between music and signal processing, we also see a lot of code projects that tap into electrical engineering processes. For example, we, use, we see Sonic Pi that's used to be able to create fun starter projects using Raspberry Pi, like building your own piano with conductive ink and paper. You also see things like AI projects emerging that will focus on automated music generation that can start with a sequence like we just had here, a desired key and instrument, or even nothing at all. There's also been a huge burst in creativity for software programs to help augmenting creating music and art in various forms. For example, creators of mashups, which blend original songs, which blend multiple songs together into an original piece, use a variety of musical software tools. Adobe has recently announced that they'll be creating a web app version of Photoshop and its many, many visual effects options. Different home construction and interior design companies have released apps using virtual reality and augmented reality tech to allow users to visualize changes that they want to make and confirm that, yeah, that shade of burgundy for the wall paint will look great with the furniture. It even affects the ways that we teach other people to code. I mean, who can forget our very own wise poignant guide to, to Ruby? a whimsical introduction to not just Ruby, but programming in general. I say all of this to say, there's a whole world out there waiting to be explored and created. Finding ways to automate routine tasks is useful and in some cases necessary, but why stop there? The next time you find yourself waiting for a PR review or with five minutes to go before another Zoom call, fix yourself a cup of coffee or tea. Let your mind wander you might just surprise yourself with what you come up with.
Thank you.